It's September 7th, 1978, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. So it was on this day that the Bulgarian playwright and dissident Georgi Ivanov Markov, or Georgi to his friends, walked across Waterloo Bridge over the River Thames in London and waited to take a bus to his job at the BBC. But while he was waiting at the bus stop, he felt a sharp pain, kind of like an insect bite or a sting in the back of his right thigh. He looked behind him and saw a man picking up an umbrella off the ground who mumbled an apology with a foreign accent and then hurriedly crossed the road and got in a taxi and drove away. Four days later, Markov died, aged 49, in a London hospital of septicemia, brackets, a form of blood poisoning, close brackets. So aside from temporarily turning this into a true crime podcast, what exactly happened? Well, the answer to that question wasn't discovered immediately. Samples from the puncture site were sent for analysis at Porton Down, which is the facility you may remember from the Sergei Skripal Salisbury poisonings. Um, And scientists there were able to uncover an extremely tiny pellet, smaller than a pinhead, which is just impossible to imagine. So don't even waste time imagining it. Um, It was hollow. And that pellet contained something that had already dispersed into poor Markov system by then, but is believed to possibly have been ricin. And all of those theories only really started hatching after he was dead. For the days before he was dead, he was kind of laughed at in hospital. No one took him seriously. Mm. Like the, the, the doctors that were operating on him were like, yeah, your conditions just don't make sense, mate. You're obviously a fantasist. Like, you know, you, you say you saw a bloke with an umbrella, then you felt an <laughs> insect bite. Just like stop being so annoying and taking up our time. And then he died. And people were like, oh, okay, we better call Scotland Yard. Maybe there was something in this. Maybe him being a Bulgarian dissident was actually important. I saw some (laughs) contemporary reports in The Guardian. They sort of put together a timeline of how it was covered at at the time. And, you know, the first report played down the cause of his death incredibly. They just said he died of septicemia. They emphasised the fact that he'd been in poor health. And they played down his claims of murderous secret agents stalking him through the streets of London. And then you see the, the subsequent reports getting a bit more like... Hmm. Oh, okay, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, to the extent that like three days later, the headline of the Daily Mail was Poison Brolly Riddle. And suddenly like, <laughs> the whole country was excited about the idea that this was a proper Cold War killing. Because we should say a bit about who Markov was. So he was a novelist mm. and a playwright who was relatively celebrated in his homeland of Bulgaria, left the country because the communists banned his plays, got a gig at the BBC World Service, which of course is in London, but the whole point of it is it's broadcasting to the world including Bulgaria, where he was still Mm. able to have a following, criticising the communists, criticising the dictator of Bulgaria, Todor Zhizhkov. So really, there was only ever really one suspect, and that was Zhizhkov. It was just a question of trying to prove that his assassination had been ordered by the Bulgarians, which actually still to this day has never been done. No, although there is a little bit of an extra clue in the fact that the day that the poisonous tip of the umbrella went into Markov's uh, leg happened to be the birthday of Todor Zhivkov. So, uh, you know, this was a little birthday present that his henchman had evidently uh, offered to him. (laughs) <laughs> but the Bulgarian regime actually had the nerve to start spreading unsubstantiated rumours that Markov was actually a double agent and therefore presumably had been assassinated by his Western paymasters, which obviously there's no evidence of that at all. I mean, he if he was a double agent, it was a very convincing cover as a bohemian playwright who loathed and despised the Bulgarian government. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's it classic does, it, double bluff. <laughs> <laughs> Only three weeks earlier, another Bulgarian dissident called Vladimir Kostov was pierced with a poison pellet as he was leaving a Paris metro station. Luckily for Kostov, he actually survived. But Mm. it's very unlikely that both of them would be, you know, secret double agents who are actually in league with Bulgaria (laughs) all along. He was able to have an operation where they took the pellet out of his body whilst he was still alive. Uh, transported it down to Port and Down for them to investigate. And it was an almost identical pellet. Two holes drilled at right angles, creating a little miniature well for a poison to go into. And then they had to come up with a short list of like, OK, so if it was by poison into the body, what poison could fit in such small quantities into this pellet? And the short list was basically plutonium, snake venom, abrin, or ricin. <laughs> now, do you know how they decided it was ricin? Because I was slightly astonished by this. No. It's given as fact, like he was killed by ricin from an umbrella. But those are not facts. They have not proven this. What they did is they got a pig that was the same weight as Markov. (laughs) Oh, no. And injected it with ricin to see what would happen. 
They injected the oh, pig man. with the same amount of rice in that might have fitted into that pellet. And the pig had similar problems with its organs and then died. And they were like, well, there you are then, Bryson. Wow. And the pig was just living its life quietly. It wasn't a dissident from anything. It wasn't a dissident pig. It had <laughs> never so had an essay on the World Service. <laughs> <laughs> it never pissed off Jishkov. So they just concluded, right, well, it's obviously Bryson then. That must be it. Whereas actually scientists since, and we had the uh, murder of Litvinenko in London in the 21st century, scientists since have said, well, the polonium-210 that killed him... That's something that much more likely in that kind of small quantity would have this kind of impact. But it's just at the mm. time, people were happy with the explanation that it was ricin because ricin could have done it. They don't know. There weren't traces of ricin. They've just assumed it was. And equally with the umbrella, um, Kostov was not shot by an umbrella. He has no reference of seeing an umbrella. He thinks it was a little pen or something that went into his back. But the whole umbrella thing, the whole thing that got everyone excited, Brolly Riddle, uh, the umbrella assassin <laughs> and all this stuff, that yeah. just kept the only source for the umbrella at all is Markov's own testimony. He said to his wife when he got to the hospital, I saw this guy put an umbrella away after I got this feeling. But it could literally be that the agent stabbed him with a pen and then dropped his umbrella. It's the James Bond of it all, isn't it? Exactly. It's like, at the end of the day, fundamentally, it doesn't matter what it was because it was this, you know, this pellet filled with poison that killed him. It wasn't, right. yeah. He wasn't assassinated with an umbrella. And really, that means it was Russia. That's the thing. Like The pellet full of poison means it was the KGB that killed him because the, the Bulgarians did not have that kind of technology. So again, it doesn't matter about the umbrella. Like We know who really did it. Like The Russians helped the Bulgarians to do it. Yeah, and that stacks up with uh, a KGB defector called Oleg Kaligan, who alleged that the KGB arranged the murder, and they even presented the uh, assassin with alternatives that included, among other things, a poisonous jelly to smear on Markov's skin. And that's basically what happened to Kim Jong-un's half-brother, wasn't it? The one who was assassinated oh, in airport. Kuala Lumpur Airport. Mm, that's he had, right, yeah. He had poison smeared on his face. Yes, with two sort of different components that were smeared on him by two different assailants and they only became active once they were both administered, sort of like... I mean, they're glue, evil, aren't they? Like, but they're good. <laughs> they are good. They know what they're doing. Well, they can be. I mean, maybe the ones that get reported are the ones where people have been a bit clumsy. And actually, if you're really successful at this, then someone... I mean, because actually the plan was probably that Markov's like, oh, I've, I've been stung by a bee or something. And then it's completely untraceable what happened to him because the poison's dispersed and you don't know. You never know who ordered it. So maybe we only ever find out about the ones where they mess it up. But it seems to me like it goes wrong more than it goes right. I mean, the Salisbury poisonings was an absolute farce, wasn't it? But don't you think there's something oddly shameless about it as well, though? Because obviously... Mm. Poisoning does leave that element of, you know, you can't prove anyone's been murdered necessarily, which if they just shot them in the head and ran away, then obviously that would be different. But at the same time, it's these poisoning methods that leave the victims alive for, you know, hours, yeah. days, sometimes weeks to tell everyone about how they are <laughs> yeah. in the process of being assassinated, usually yes. by Russia. Yeah. And they, they don't seem to care that the victim is there telling everyone. Yeah, I'm also not sure that these are uh, cases of assassinations gone wrong. I think part of the polonium T in Litvinenko's case or the Novichok in Skripal's case is that it's, you know, it's Russia saying these are the things that we have access to. No one else has access to them. So when you discover the cause of death, you will you will also discover the culprit. But we will say that we had nothing to do with it. So it, it is part of the sending of a message to the former spies or dissidents or whoever it is that they're knocking off. It also gives time for a getaway though doesn't it i mean that's the thing like if you shoot someone in the head the police mm. come after you pretty quickly in central london it's whereas true. if you, you drop an umbrella you've got four days to get out of there <laughs> <laughs> and that's a blanket rule that goes for everyone who drops an umbrella. <laughs> tomorrow they made their entrance on a barge headed up by neptune who was played by an octogenarian gunpowder magnate love the show support the show patreon.com slash retrospectors Part of the ACAST Creator Network.